Hello, my name is Madeline Allwine with Bentley Systems, and today we will be going through workshop three on designing culverts and head walls. We're going to start by opening an existing hydraulic model. So you can browse to wherever you have your files saved and open head wall start. And you can select yes to this message and select yes to track changes. And you can close user notifications if they come up and select zoom extents to view the model. And this is what it should look like. Our task for this workshop is to design three culverts to go under this road shown here. So to start, we're going to run some hydrology calculations to get a sense of the amount of flow that we're dealing with. So to do that, we want to make sure that it's set to 10 year as the current scenario and select this arrow below compute and select compute hydrology. And next we're going to select view graphs to open the catchments graph. And this shows us the flow for the 10 year scenario. And next we're going to do the same for the 50 year scenario. So we're going to make that current and select analysis, compute hydrology. And then we're going to view the catchments graph again. But this time we have to go to series options and make sure that the 50 year scenario is selected. And from this graph, we can see that the peak flows are approximately 10 to 20 cubic feet per second, which means that our culverts need to be about 24 inches in diameter. All right, so we are going to start by zooming in on pond one, because this is where we are going to place our first culvert. And to do that, we are going to go to the layout tab and select head wall. And we are to place the head wall directly on top of um, CS12 to morph this cross section into a head wall. So you can select yes to this message that appears. And then next we're going to select the conduit tool and click on H3, the head wall we just created, and then right click and select head wall, and then place the next head wall at the base of pond one and then right click and select done. And then we can click this arrow to get the select tool back. So next we're going to enter conduit properties for the conduit we just created. And first we wanna make sure that the start and stop nodes are correct. So we want the conduit to be going from the upstream head wall to the downstream end wall. So we can see here that we need to reverse them. And to do that, you can click in the node reversal field and click this ellipses. And now as you can see, the start and stop node are correct. And next we will set the material as concrete. And as you can see, it's a user defined conduit and it is a circular conduit and we will enter 24 inches as the diameter. Next in the physical culvert section we will change is culvert to true and then next we will set upstream headwall definition type to use start node and downstream end wall definition type to use stop node. And next we will set the properties for our upstream head wall H4. And first we have to select a 
an upstream pond for this head wall. And to do that, you will click in the upstream pond field and hit select upstream pond to select it from the drawing. We can click on pond one. And as you can see, it's connected with this dashed line now. And next we'll enter our elevations. So the ground elevation is 568 feet. And the invert elevation is 564 feet. And next we need to define an inlet description. And to do that, we will select Edit Culvert Inlet Coefficients and select Import from Library. And next, we'll need to expand the circular folder to find concrete square edge with head wall and select this option. And next, we need to change the KR coefficient to 0.1. And now we can close out of this window and select the inlet description we just made, concrete square edge with head wall as the inlet description. And now we will choose that same inlet description for our end wall, H3. So we choose it from this menu. And now we are ready to add our second conduit or, and culvert, which will be at the base of CM3. And to do that, we will use the same process as the previous culvert. We will morph each of these cross sections into head walls and then connect them with a conduit. And right click and select done. So first we need to edit the catchment three properties to select our head wall H5 as the outflow element. So we choose select outflow element and then click on H5. And as you can see, they're now connected by this dashed line. Next, we'll ent enter the conduit CO5 properties. So we will choose the material as concrete and the diameter as 24 inches. And we'll change is culvert to true. And we'll set upstream head wall definition type to use start node and downstream end wall definition type to use stop node. Next, we will change the inlet description for the head wall and the end wall. So first for H5, we'll change it to the inlet description that we created before. And we'll do the same for H6. We will choose concrete square edge with head wall as the inlet description. And now we are ready to create our third and final culvert using the same process. We're going to morph CS15 and CS16 into head walls and connect them with a conduit. Right click and select done. And now we will enter conduit properties for conduit six. We'll select the material as concrete and enter a diameter of 24 inches. Change is culvert to true. And we will use the start and stop nodes as the upstream head wall and downstream end wall definition types as we did before. And next we will set the inlet description for the head wall and end wall as the same as before the concrete square edge with head wall so for h7 and then we'll do the same for h8 
And now we should be ready to run the model. So to do that, we are going to select 10 year as the current scenario, and then select analysis, compute. And we can close the calculation executive summary. And we want to know if the three culverts we made can carry the flow. So to do that, we are going to select all of them by clicking on each of them while holding down the control key. And then we will right click and select graph. And we want to graph the depth over rise. So we're going to check that and uncheck flow and hit OK. So as you can see, the highest point on this graph is around 55%. So the culverts are only approximately half full or less. And as you can see here, um, Conduit 4, the culvert that is the pond outlet, has a slower response to the storm than the other two culverts. So now we want to graph the depth of each culvert to see if any of the culverts are under inlet control. So we're going to do the same thing. Select each of the three, graph, and select depth in. And as you can see here, the depth in um, conduit six is equal to its diameter, which means that it is under inlet control. And next, we will create a profile from cross-section 3 to outfall 3. And to do that, we will select profiles either in the Analysis tab or we can select View Profiles. And we will select New and select from drawing. And then we will select CS3 and outfall 3. And notice that everything in between is also selected. And we will click this green check when we're done and select open profile. And next we are going to browse to approximately hour five or as close as we can get. It doesn't have to be exact. And as we can see here, there is ponding in front of this culvert, conduit six, that is included in our profile. And next we will run the 50 year scenario. So to do that, we will change the current scenario to 50 year and select Analysis, Compute. And we can close the summary. And again, we are going to create a graph for the three culverts. So you're going to select all of them by holding down Control, right click, and select Graph. This time we're going to graph flow, depth over rise, and the depth in for each, click OK. And as we can see in the depth graph, there is now a second culvert that is experiencing um, ponding. So now to answer the workshop questions. Question one asks, what is the depth in the three culverts in the 10 year scenario at hour five? So to do that, we are going to look at a graph of the depth in each culvert. So we're going to select each of them, right click and select graph. Make sure the 10 year scenario is selected and then check on depth in and uncheck flow and hit OK. 
and next we're going to go over to the data tab to find the exact values at hour five as the question asks. And we can see here that at hour five, conduit four experiences a depth of 0 0.71 feet, conduit five has a depth of 1.66 feet, and conduit six has a depth of two feet. And these values may vary slightly from person to person depending on the calculated pipe lengths. Question two asks, what does it mean when the depth for a conduit is equal to the pipe size? And this means that there is ponding in front of the inlet, which is also known as inlet control. Question three asks, in the 50 year scenario, what is the hydraulic grade line at the head wall from CM4 at the hour seven and how does it compare with the road elevation? So we know that the road elevation is 568 because we have been entering this as the ground elevation for our elements. And to find the HDL at hour seven, we are going to make a graph of the hydraulic grade line out and click OK. And then go to the data tab and scroll down to hour seven. And as you can see here, the HDL is 568.21 feet, which is greater than the road elevation. Which brings us to question four, what happens if the HDL is greater than the road elevation? And this means that the roadway is overtopping, which would create dangerous driving conditions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.